السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, welcome again to our Learn Deen Daily Platform program entitled 100 Key Advices from the Quran Walhamdulillah, we again Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the support, for the help, for the permission provided by Him in order to benefit ourselves and others. My brothers and sisters, let us continue our journey of 100 key advices from the Quran. The advice from Surah Maryam, Surah number 19, ayah number 43. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Bismillah rahman rahim Ya abati. إِنِّي قَدْ جَاءَنِي مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَمْ يَأْتِكَ فَاتَّبِعْنِي أَهْدِكَ صِرَاطًا سَوِيَّا O my father, Ibrahim alayhi salam is referred here. O my father, indeed there has come to me a knowledge that which has not come to you. So follow me, I will guide you to an even path, to a straight path. My brothers and sisters, let us again trigger ourselves with the three A's as an action plan, acquire, apply and advocate. We need to acquire this understanding, my brothers and sisters. It is not important to consider <coughs> the age when we actually, uh, you know, seek uh, the knowledge. What is important is the ilm, the knowledge which matters a lot. This is what we learn as an advice from the Quran that when Ibrahim alayhi salam he told to his father that I have the knowledge which you do not have so follow me so a child can actually say to a father based on the right knowledge in a nice way follow me there is no harm in terms of following our youngsters our younger people you know, when it comes to the right, when it comes to the truth, inshallah, we need to apply this in our lives, my brothers and sisters, because we, most of, uh, you know, us, we live with a tendency, with a mindset that, you know what, if I am elder to you, I cannot learn from you. This is not the spirit of truly the learners of the Quran. The advice comes from the Quran, which clearly states that we can even follow someone who is, uh, you know, as young as a son, subhanallah. We learn so many things from our children and we should be open for learning from our children as well. Absolutely. When it is the truth, it is the right, obviously. We know that the way also should be like the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam who told to his father who was an idol worshipper, an idol maker. He respectfully invited him to Allah Rabbul Izzah and he chooses the words mentioned in the Quran Ya Abati, O oh my father, O oh my dear father, O oh my respected father, O oh my loving father because of this Ya Abati it has a deeper emotions involved in it so with respect with repute, with humbleness, with kindness, we have to ensure that we can teach others as well and others should also, uh, you know, we also should uh, understand that we can learn from our youngsters. And we need to advocate this, my brothers and sisters, after applying this in our lives, we need to advocate it to others as well because what is more important is the knowledge that is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next is advice comes from Surah Taha, Surah number 20, Ayah number 25 to 28, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Qala, Moses is referred here, Musa alayhi salam, Rabbish rahli sadri, wa yassirli amri, wahlul uqdatam min lisani, yafqahu qawli. These are the powerful words and the prayer of Musa alayhi salam. My Lord, expand for me my breast with assurance, with certainty, with strength, you know, and ease for me my task and unite the, uh, and, and untie the knot from my tongue, meaning remove the impediment, the, the problem, the hassle that I, that I have from my tongue, that they may understand my speech. 
my brothers and sisters we need to acquire this understanding that when it comes to you know uh, uh, speech we need to uh, make sure that we use this beautiful and powerful dua made by Musa alayhi salam where it clearly shows how uh, deeply this dua is 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 done subhanallah and how beautifully it is constructed in such a way that you know uh, invites the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the impediment uh, from our tongue and also uh, we are asking allah to ease our task we are asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for people to understand better my brothers and sisters apply it in your lives and you will see tremendous results out of it inshallah many of us when we speak uh, to others each other you know what ha- what happens a lot of times the conflicts the disputes the fights erupts why because of the communication issue because of the different background race religion culture you know the, the communication could not be passed on you know even it could happen between the husband and the wife between the parents and the children between the family members between the friends so it is ideal that we recite this dua practically by applying it in our lives and also advocate it teach and preach it to others as well for them also to ease their tasks for or them also to remove the impediment from their speech for them also so that people can understand them better inshallah this is the true spirit of this dua uh, subhanallah the next advice comes from surah furqan surah surah mu'minun surah mu'minun surah number 23 ayah number one to five where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim bismillahi rahmani rahim qad aflaha al mu'minun alladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'un walladhina hum anil laghwi mu'ridun walladhina hum liz zakati fa'ilun walladhina hum li furujihim hafizun allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives a beautiful peaceful uh, and uh, you know golden advices subhanallah in surah al-mu'minun uh, certainly allah says certainly will the believers have succeeded they are they who are during prayer humbly submissive and they who are away from ill speech and they who are observe observant of zakah and they who guard their private parts my brothers and sisters the need is that we acquire this beautiful pieces of advice where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving the formula of success for the believers who are humbly submissive during their prayers we need to acquire this understanding my brothers and sisters that we need to be humbly uh, you know uh, submissive to uh, while we do the prayer we need to avoid the ill speech we need to ensure that we pay zakah regularly and we need to ensure that we protect our private parts this requires a practical application my brothers and sisters the most common particular powerful and regular ibadah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prayer we need to ensure that we become among those who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about and the believers who are successful the first thing allah raises here is the uh, prayer subhanallah we need to ensure that we perfect our prayer in terms of recitation in terms of timings in terms of dress code in terms of uh, you know uh, particularly uh, ensuring that we uh, fixed and and ensure that we plan for our salah subhanallah we need to ensure that we uh, avoid the ill speech you know pay zakah and ensure that we protect our private part we need to advocate this powerful you know uh, formula of success the beautiful pieces of advice mentioned in the quran my brothers and sisters to ensure that for success we need salah salah is something which is the recipe for success salah success also requires uh, to uh, for, uh, us to avoid ill speech success also requires for us to pay zakah and to ensure that we protect our private parts my brothers and sisters these are the powerful advices that comes directly from your and my creator from your and my maker from your and my rabb allah rabbul izza in it is guidance in it is direction in it is recipe for you and me for the salvation the next advice comes from surah 
An-Nur. Surah number 24, ayah number 30 and 31. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغْضُونَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفُذُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ ذَلِكَ أَزْكَالَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا, بما يَصْنَعُونَ وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُدْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَذْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and gives a very powerful and, and, and beautiful piece of advice. Tell the believing men to reduce or uh, some of their vision and guard their private parts. That is purer for them. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what you do. And tell the believing women to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts and not expose their adornment except that which necessarily appears thereof. We need to acquire this understanding, my brothers and sisters, that the, the lowering the gaze uh, or command, it came first for the men. Men should immediately lower their gaze whenever there is any shameful thought comes in our mind and uh, because it is uh, uh, given as a sign of respect a sign of prosperity a sign of purity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he protects those who protects their private parts subhanallah and this is something it begins from our eyesight our vision and we need to uh, understand that after the command given to the women that they should also lower their gaze and guard their prop, uh, you know, pr- private parts and ensure that they protect and, and cover themselves except that which appears you know, uh, thereof. My brothers and sisters, we need to apply this beautiful piece of advice in our lives for us to be prosperous, for us to be successful, for us to be ensuring that we know that Allah is watching us. We know that we are the slaves of Allah. We know that we want Allah ourselves to be pure so that we can get into Jannah which is full of purity and it accepts only those who are pure. My brothers and sisters, advocate this powerful advice is, you know, mentioned in the Quran. SubhanAllah, many people think that the, the hijab uh, is, is, is a, in, a, in a, many people actually understand hijab in a very narrow sense. SubhanAllah, in these couple of ayats, Allah Rabbul Iza made it clear that the hijab of the eyes begins and it given uh, as a command to lower our gaze for the men first and then it was given to the women so both uh, of these things are uh, is highly uh, uh, important and morally it will uplift us in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the next advice comes from surah furqan surah number 25 ayah number 30 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّي إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا And the messenger has said, O oh my Lord, indeed, my people have taken this Qur'an as a thing abandoned. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters, let us acquire this understanding that the Rasul of Allah, the messenger of Allah, your and my beloved messenger, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would complain, would raise a voice against, would complain the most merciful after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you know, he would complain on the day of judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about those people, about those group of people, about those section of people who have abandoned the Quran. Subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, we need to apply this in our lives. This comes as a kind of a warning, subhanallah, and advice also for us not to be among those group of people or those category of people about whom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would complain to Allah Rabbul Izza. My brothers and sisters, in order to, for us to be ensured that we should not be among those kind of people, we need to believe in it, Quran, with certainty. We need to read it regularly the way it should be read. You know, we need to apply and, and, uh, and, and practically implement it, uh, the advices mentioned in the Quran. We need to understand it the way it is explained by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and understood 
rightly by the Sahaba Akram. Uh, we need to ensure that we we use it as a, as a as a uh, you know defense. Uh, Subhanallah. Whenever there is any allegation against the Quran, we need to ensure that we defend the Quran. We need to ensure that we promote the advices mentioned in the Quran. We need to ensure that we live by the Quran and we die by applying the teachings of the Quran subhanallah my brothers and sisters we need to advocate this piece of advice comes as a warning subhanallah to our own family members to our own friends and relatives to our own societies and wherever you know we move about we need to ensure and raise this as as a concerned point for people to be the companion of the Quran for people to be the book people of the book people of the Quran subhanallah for indeed in it is our success and salvation. The next advice comes from Surah Qasas, Surah number 28, ayah number 77, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ آتَاكَ اللَّهُ دَارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا but seek through that which Allah has given you the home of the year after and yet do not forget your share of the world subhanallah we need to acquire this understanding that Islam is a practical way of life it does not want us to completely forget the world or uh, uh, the life of this world rather Allah Rabbul Aiza, he says, do not forget the portion of your world. Subhanallah. This is the only time, this is the only place where we can actually make or break our akhirah. We need to ensure that we, we, we live, uh, uh, you know, in this world with all the things that are, uh, you know, uh, that are important for us, that will take us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in akhirah. This is the world where we should not lose focus, subhanallah. And we need to apply this in our lives. Some people, they, they think only about akhirah and they make this life miserable. Some people, they make akhirah completely out of their minds and they live only for dunya. We as Muslimin, as balanced ummah, as people of the Quran, who received the advices from the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants us to strike a balance. We need to ensure that we live this life as the best. We need to ensure that we live our life hereafter also the best. So my brothers and sisters, this is how we need to have this understanding and that's why Allah Rabbul Izzah taught us, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azab nar We need to have and seek the count, you know, bounties from Allah Rabbul Izzah from this world and the hereafter as well. And remember my brothers and sisters, this is the only chance for, uh, for us to succeed and to make our akhirah as well. The next advice comes from Surah uh, Ankabut, Surah number 29, ayah number 69, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Again, my brothers and sisters, Allah Rabbul Izzah, He says, and those who strive for us, we will surely guide, guide them to our ways. Uh, and indeed, Allah is with the doers of good. My brothers and sisters, acquire, apply and advocate. This powerful, peaceful uh, advice from the Quran that we need to strive and Allah will make a way which you can never imagine. Indeed, Allah is with those who are the doers of good. We need to understand this, acquire this understanding that the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only true trust when we do our uh, attempt, when we do our hard work, our efforts. And we need to apply this practically in our lives. In order for us to succeed, we need to play our role, our part, and then rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Advocate this teaching to others as well for them to understand that we have to make our own effort. We need to place our things right and then rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah Rabbul Izza, He loves those who are the doers of good. My brothers and sisters, Allah will surely guide to those who seek guidance and who walks 
on the path of guidance. If we sit back at rest and think that things will come into existence by Allah Rabbul Izzah, it won't work like that. We need to work, we need to play our part, we need to perform our role and then rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, Allah loves those who are the doers of good. Another advice comes from Surah Rum, Surah number 30, and number 21, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهَا إِنْ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Allah Rabbul Izzah, He says, and of his science is he is that he created for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them. Subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, we need to again acquire this understanding that the sakina comes from our spouses, and uh, as I, and it is again a sign of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah Rabbul Izzah, He wants us to apply this in our lives, in order for us. To reflect that from among our own maids, we actually receive tranquility, sakina, enjoyment, pleasure, joy, satisfaction, that happiness, subhanallah. When we do not get sakina from our own maids, you know, if the couples, they don't enjoy in their own lives the element of sakina, the element of satisfaction, serenity, happiness, joy, pleasure, you know, happiness, subhanallah, we need to recheck our treatment with each other, behavior with each other, because the purpose of creating us as mates, subhanallah, as spouses, is that we should receive from each other this element of sakina, this element of serenity and peace and tranquility, subhanallah. We need to apply this in our lives, my brothers and sisters. And subhanallah, we see this as a miracle, as a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that husband and wives, they enjoy a special privilege, a very special relationship altogether, subhanallah. So we need to ensure that we find that peace and tranquility and if there is no peace there is no tranquility there is no enjoyment between that relation we need to check back you know our own behaviors with each other and and we need to check back that are we displeasing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any means or ways uh, possible so we need to ensure that we protect ourselves from getting into trap and we need to ensure that we advocate it to others as well my brothers and sisters there are a lot of couples who are actually suffering uh, you know and and getting into uh, so many disputes and 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 differences subhanallah the uh, they fail to realize that the very purpose of uh, uh, allah rabbul izza towards the spouses is that they should enjoy the serenity between each other they should enjoy the tranquility and peace with each other and if that is lost then there is something wrong that we need to un understand and when we advocate this inshallah people can benefit themselves and we can benefit our own lives inshallah another advice comes from surah luqman surah number 31 ayah number 17 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, the advisors of uh, Luqman, Luqman Hakim, Ya Bunaya, Akim Salata, Wamur Bil Maruf, Wanha Anil Munkar, Wasbir, Allah Ma Asabak, In Zalika Min Azmil Umur. O oh my son, Luqman Hakim, a wise man, he gives the advice to his son, O oh my son, establish prayer, enjoin what is right. Forbid what is wrong and be patient over what befalls you. Indeed, all that is of the matters requiring determin determination. Acquire this understanding, my brothers and sisters, uh, the beautiful advice given by Luqman Hakim to his son. And in, in, in uh, other words, it's to us as well that we need to establish our salah. We need to enjoin what is good and forbid what is bad. And we should ensure that we perform patience. For indeed, it will help us to come out of any and every kind of problem. Apply this in our lives. Ensure that there should be a clear establishment of of salah in our lives 
Salah, my brothers and sisters, is the pillar of Islam. It is the pillar or a differentiator, uh, differentiator uh, that uh, that makes us uh, from the believing to the non-believing. Subhanallah, Salah, it should be read in a way that is uh, that is very uh, perfect in in terms of its recitation uh, you know dress code actions performance everything should be dedicated in that way and we need to ensure that we enjoy what is good any form of good we need to enjoy and do that any form of wrong or evil or immoral we need to try ourselves and abstain from it and if we get into trap of that we need to make tawbah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed he is absolutely forgiving and we need to advocate this as well to others uh, you know uh, the uh, da'wah of uh, to the muslims to perform salah da'wah to the muslims and the whole of humanity for enjoying uh, what is good and forbid what is bad and, and invite people to be patient so that they may uh, you know attain uh, piety inshallah another advice comes from surah luqman uh, surah number 31 ayah number 19 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says waqsid fi mashika <coughs> واغضض من صوتك إن أنكر الأصوات لصوت الحمير. الله رب العزة he says and be moderate in your pace and lower your voice. Indeed, the most disagreeable of sounds is the voice of donkeys. We need to acquire this understanding, my brothers and sisters, that the the decorum, the discipline, the beautiful way of speaking is that which does not require shouting or yelling this is not uh, from the etiquettes of islam subhanallah whomever it is you know we need to adopt the understanding first that allah does not like those who yell or who shout uh, while speaking and we need to apply this in our lives you know a lot of times do you, uh, you know uh, while we are angry especially that is the time where we need to control ourselves and control our voices for indeed allah assimilates allah rabbul izzah he makes it equivalent to the voices of donkeys allahu akbar we need to ensure that we abstain from such practice my brothers and sisters and we need to advocate it to others as well so that everyone can actually uh, you know benefit from it and everyone can practice this beautiful formula of not raising their voices like donkeys allahu akbar another advice comes from surah Fatir, Surah number 35, Ayah number 15, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhal nas, antumul fuqara ila Allah, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. O mankind, you are those in need of Allah, while Allah is the free of need, the praise worthy. We need to acquire this understanding, my brothers and sisters, that we are the uh, we are the people who need Allah. Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah is self-sufficient. Allah is Samad. He is self-sufficient. He is independent. He does not need you, me or anyone to do ibadah, to worship him. Rather, we need Allah Rabbul Izzah at every stage of our lives. You know, we need to understand this while we do the worship, while we do all kinds of ibadah, dhikr, Quran, salah, uh, you know, zakah, all these things. It is actually going to benefit us. It's not going to benefit Allah. Allah will have no difference. Even the whole world doesn't worship Allah. Allah will have no difference. Even the whole world worships Allah. Allah is by himself. He is as his majesty suits him. Subhanallah. So we need to ensure that we apply this in our lives as well. And, and have this clear uh, practice uh, of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And making us humble enough. To worship him because if allah is giving us any option uh opportunity in our lives it is the mercy of allah Rabbul Izzah. indeed we uh, many a times don't deserve things which allah gives out of his mercy so we need to apply this in our lives that allah is independent and we are in need of allah and when we are in need of allah we have to rely on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask allah Rabbul Izzah. we need to advocate this beautiful 
piece of advice, my brothers and sisters, for those particularly arrogant people who think that I am by myself, subhanallah, uh, they are rich by themselves, they are good by themselves. We cannot be anyone without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, we all need Allah Rabbul Izzah in our lives and therefore we need to worship him alone and we need to serve him alone until we die. The next advice comes from Surah Safat, Surah number 37, Ayah number 102, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the discussion of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam. Qala ya abati, if alma tu'mar satajiduni insha'allahu minas sabirin. He said, Ismail alayhi salam, after hearing the vision, the dream of Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, O oh my father, do as you are commanded. You will find me, if Allah wills, of the steadfast. My brothers and sisters, we need to acquire this understanding that how beautiful example Ismail alayhi salam Le, you know, left uh, for all the sons, for all the children for that matter, uh, how you should be obedient to your uh, parents, subhanAllah. Uh, look at the beautiful, uh, you know, statement of Ismail alayhi salam who said, if alma tu'mar, do as you have been commanded to do. Inshallah, you will find me among those who are patient. Inshallah, we need to apply this in our lives, my brothers and sisters, that, uh, you know, for us, listening and obeying and following our parents, uh, you know, is, is very important in taking care of them having best treatment towards them is very very important you know as long as they don't go against the quran and the teachings of the prophet it is anything that they say we need to listen to them we need to obey them subhanallah and this is how we can prosper in our lives in this world and the hereafter we need to ensure that we advocate it to others there are a lot of disobedient children out there my brothers and sisters let them hear the beautiful obedience of Ismail alayhi salam towards his father and how Allah raised their status high fi dunya wal akhira in this world and the hereafter we need to advocate this beautiful discussion of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam so that every one of us can take this beautiful example this beautiful piece of advice in our lives and get success the next advice comes from surah Az-Zumar, Surah number 39, Ayah number 53, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي أَلَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O oh my servants, Allah says, Say, O oh my servants, who have transgressed against themselves by sinning, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Do not despair from the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, it is He who is the forgiving, the merciful. Acquire this powerful piece of advice, my brothers and sisters, that Allah Rabbul Izzah, He is saying and addressing to those who have done wrong to themselves. Because we need to acquire this understanding that if we do sin, we damage ourselves. We distance ourselves from Allah Rabbul Izzah. The more we sin, the more we are away from Allah. The more we are away from Allah, the more we are closer to shaitan. The more we are closer to shaitan, the more we are closer to hellfire. So we need to ensure that we have the hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is addressing to everyone out there and stating, Ya ibadi, O oh my slaves. Allah is showing that belongingness that He has between His, uh, Him and, and His servants and us, subhanAllah, we as servants of Allah, the, the, the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah being our master, He is calling out and stating that, Oh, you have sinned yourselves, who have transgressed your, li you know, your limits. Do not, you know, uh, lose the hope in the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Allah is indeed forgiving and most merciful. So my brothers and sisters, the hope is still there for us to gain the mercy of Allah. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. No matter how many sins that you have done, no matter how many uh, things you have done wrong, just 
be sincere in coming back to Allah and turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you inshallah. We need to advocate it to others as well after applying my brothers and sisters so that everyone can enjoy this beautiful piece of advice and have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his mercy. The last piece of advice comes from Surah Fussilat, Surah number 30, uh, 41, Ayah number 34, Surah number 41, Ayah number 34, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِي أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ Hameem. And not equal are the good deed and the bad. Repel evil by that deed which is better. And thereupon the one upon between uh, whom between you and him is enmity will become as though he was a devoted friend. Allahu Akbar. Acquire this understanding, my brothers and sisters, that, uh, uh, you know, whenever there is, uh, uh, there, is, there is anyone who does wrong to you, don't reply him with the wrong repel the bad with the good you know repel the bad because go good and bad are not equal allah is giving an advice a very important advice my brothers and sisters for us to social uh, socially responsible and socially uh, happy we have to ensure that between husband and wives between parents and children between brothers brothers and sisters between aunts and uncles between friends and relatives this beautiful piece of advice needs to be applied in our lives that good and bad are not equal. Remove the bad with the good. So if anyone does wrong to you, you do good to them. And Allah is stating that you will find that the person who you feel that he is enemy to you will become your close friend. He'll become good to you, inshallah, when you apply this sincerely in our lives. My brothers and sisters, we need to advocate this beautiful piece of advice to others as well, that good and bad are not equal for sure. And we need to repel, we need to remove, we need to replace bad with that which is good. Inshallah, when we do this practice in our lives practically and sincerely, we will find those who are enemy to us will become our close friend. My brothers and sisters, these advices are so powerful, so beautiful, so important that when we apply this in our lives, when we understand this, when we advocate it, inshallah, we will be successful, we will be happy, we will enjoy the bounties of this world and the hereafter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower His guidance, His mercy, His help on us so that we may live our lives in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we depart this world in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'awana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.